Good day, I am Dr. Hema from the Department of Physics, Kamraj College of Engineering and Technology. And here in this video, we are going to learn about solid oxide fuel cell. In this modernized and industrialized world, there are two threatening factors which is being faced globally. One is the global warming and the second is the energy crisis, that is the energy demand. So, to overcome these two problems, definitely it is wiser to depend our energy needs on some electrochemical power system. So, here our fuel cell is one such efficient electrochemical power system which converts hydrogen and oxygen into electricity and water. Water being the only byproduct that it is an eco friendly device. The two important uh, components of the fuel cell is one is the catalytic layer. The catalyst uh, catalytic layer speeds up the rate of the electrochemical reaction and uh, we have uh, electrolyte and the role of electrolyte is to allow only ions to pass through and it blocks the electron flow. To have a glimpse about uh, the history of fuel cell, it started in the year uh, 1800 wherein two British scientists William Nicholson and Anthony, they had a good attempt of uh, converting uh, water into hydrogen and oxygen. Later in the year 1838, William Robert Grew made an attempt uh, in reversing this reaction wherein hydrogen and oxygen has been combined to generate electricity and water and he finally succeeded. And later the founder of physical uh, chemistry Friedrich William uh, gave an, uh, an explanation about the theoretical explanation about uh, how a fuel cell operates. And uh, later on uh, there was a drastic work uh, done on alkali fuel cell and uh, the first alkali electrolyte fuel cell was demonstrated in the year 1958. And the main advantages of fuel cell is one is it is quiet in operation there is there will not be any noise during power generation in a fuel cell and the second is it is less pollutant water is the only byproduct there is no any other uh, greenhouse gas emissions and uh, its conversion efficiency is also very high and it can be installed uh, near the point of use. Uh, so, there is no need for any distribution or uh, transmission and uh, those losses can also be restricted uh, by doing so. And uh, there is no extra cooling system required for uh, the fuel cell because uh, the heat generated in the fuel cell will be automatically dissipated, it will be very less and it will also be dissipated easy to the environment. And uh, fuel cell uh, plants are very compact and it occupies very less space and uh, there is no recharging is required means as far as you supply hydrogen and oxygen you will have a perennial output out of it. Next coming to the broad classification of uh, fuel cell, um, basically fuel cell are uh, classified uh, based on the type of electrolyte used, based on uh, the chemical nature of the electrolyte, based on the operating temperature, even based on the application where it has been implemented. So, there are n number of fuel cell available. Here in, uh, in this video, we are going to learn about uh, the types of fuel cell which is based on uh, the types of the electrolyte being used. So, we have a solid oxide fuel cell, molten carbonate fuel cell, alkali fuel cell, direct methanol fuel cell, phosphoric acid fuel cell and we have polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cell and we have a protonic ceram uh, ceramic fuel cell. So, let us uh, enter into our topic and uh, the topic is solid oxide fuel cell and solid oxide fuel cell is uh, otherwise called as high temperature fuel cell because it operates at a very high temperature uh, among all other fuel cell. Its operating temperature is around uh, 600 to 1000 degrees Celsius and it is a ceramic based fuel cell and uh, it is also most efficient and stable of all the well established fuel cell system. And coming to few advantages, it has a high combined heat and uh, power efficiency 
uh, it has a very good long term stability and it is uh, it has a high tolerance to impurities. So, we have a good flexibility of choosing the fuel and we have uh, less emission here in this uh, fuel cell system and uh, it is relatively low cost. So, in other fuel cell we need uh, uh, costly platinum electrodes wherein here we can go with alternate uh, material. So, it is of less cost. Coming to the important components of solid oxide fuel cell, here are few examples wherein uh, uh, the materials can be uh, chosen. In the anode, uh, we use um, electronically conducting nickel yttria stabilized zirconia and uh, which is otherwise called cermet that is uh, ceramic metal composite material will be used generally. And in the cathode compartment, we use mixed ion uh, conducting material like perovskite, uh, lanthanum, magnet, etcetera. And in the electrolyte, we use uh, yttria stabilized zirconia, which is abbreviated as YSZ. And uh, to have uh, this is uh, so by uh, sandwiching the electrolyte between the two electrodes, we will have the fuel cell system, single fuel cell. To have a reasonable voltage, we can go with. Uh, um, series connection of all these fuel cell that is called the fuel cell stack. So, let us uh, learn about the working operation of a solid oxide fuel cell and this is the schematic diagram of a solid oxide fuel cell. We have the electrolyte uh, which is a ceramic material which will be sandwiched between the two electrodes that is anode and the cathode. And here if you see we have a, a provision for the hydrogen fuel passage and when this hydrogen is entered and uh, entering and reaching the anode, it accepts the oxide ions that is penetrating through the electrolyte and it there will be generation of electricity that is electron flow starts. So, electron will be penetrating through the external circuit and reaches the other electrode that is the cathode and uh, here during this uh, interaction there will be generation of water and water will be collected in the outlet channel. And coming other side of the electrode we have the cathode and here atmospheric oxygen will be purged to flow through the cathode. When it interacts with the cathode here the oxygen combines with the electrons that is flowing from the external circuit and we have uh, oxide ions this oxide ion will be penetrated through the electrolyte system and the whole process take place in a cyclic way and this uh, results in the power generation and this happens um, as far as we supply hydrogen and oxygen on either side of the electrodes. And to understand the chemistry behind uh, the working operation of solid oxide fuel cell. Here we have this diagrammatic representation and here uh, we have the anode, cathode and we have the provision for the hydrogen flow. The hydrogen enters through this channel and when it reaches the anode, this chemical reaction takes place that is hydrogen combines with oxide ions that is O2 minus ion and we have water production and also electricity generation that is electrons and this electron will be moved moving through the external circuit and it reaches the other electrode that is the cathode because it will be blocked to flow or penetrate through the electrolyte. And here at the cathode we have the cell reaction like this, this oxygen that has been supplied at the other end combines with the electron and we have the oxide ion that is O2 minus ion and this O2 minus ion will be penetrating through the electrolyte. So, by this way the cell reaction takes place and we will have the perennial output of electricity from the solid oxide fuel cell. And uh, we have learnt uh, what is solid oxide fuel cell, how it operates and what are all the uh, important advantage of uh, solid oxide fuel cell. But still then solid oxide fuel cell have some limitations which is considered as its disadvantage. Because 
it is a high temperature fuel cell which operates at a temperature of 600 to 1000 degrees Celsius because of which there is a chances of a longer startup time. It will not immediately generate electricity as other fuel cell system. And the second uh, limitation is there will be some mechanical and chemical compatibility issues. There will not be being ceramic material the electrolyte will not be so compatible so as to say it will not be so intact with the other two electrodes. So, but still then research has been hotly pursued to uh, have an advancement of uh, improving the overall performance of the solid oxide fuel cell. So, I trust in this video you might have learned uh, all about the solid oxide fuel cell and uh, what are all its uh, advantages, limitations and uh, how it operates with that trust and hope uh, I end up this video. Thank you all.